Ali was the one I always wanted. To have a pop at a big man in a real contest and not some two-bit exhibition would have been the dogs. I've been pestering Mickey and Tell to get it on for ages and calls were made to the movers and shakers in the States. There was a great deal of interest on both sides and Mickey flew out to the US to talk to Harold J. Smith, a thoroughly dubious character who was trying to muscle his way into boxing promotion and had Ali signed up to his professional sports incorporated promotion, which was apparently one big racket. Such was Smith's reputation as a swindler that even Don King called him the Black Jesse James. So Mickey goes for talks with Smith in New York and contracts were signed for me and Ali to fight in a 10-round, $1 million promotion in Hawaii in March or April 1981. Our purse was $500,000, but Mickey never seriously believed that Ali would get a license to fight me. So he wangled a $200,000 retainer out of Smith. Mickey told him that if he couldn't give him a guarantee that the show would go ahead, he would go to Bob Arum instead to see if he could get it on. Arum was a top New York lawyer, businessman and boxing promoter who sold some of Ali's fights and became Don King's big rival. He was the man behind the super fights like Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns and Sugar Ray versus Marvin Hagler. When Mickey told Smith he would put me versus Ali over to Arum, Smith goes, no, 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 don't do that. He told Mickey he'd give him a down payment and even asked him how much he wanted. And Mickey says, I want half a million to get the fight on. So Smith says, no, I'll give you a $200,000 deposit and I'll get the fight on. White handed a whole lot over in cash and told Mickey he'd send a big black guy out to pick him up. He said he'd have a car waiting for him at the airport. Mickey was truly shitting himself. He had 200 grand in his briefcase and thought he was going to get hustled into some dark alleyway where this guy would do him over and then fuck off with the cash. He seriously thought he was going to get topped. So he told Smith he had a yellow cab waiting for him outside with the engine running. The whole business was deeply suspect, but only Mickey Duff could pull off a deal like that. And, of course he was right about Ali. He pulled out at the last minute, took a year out from boxing, then lost his last fight to Trevor Burbick in Nassau in December 81 and retired a broken man. To be fair to Ali, he was an old man and not in the best of health, and the Hawaii Boxing Commission had voted 3-2 to two in favour of deferring his request for a licence. Mickey, the sly old dog, always knew Ali was never going to get a licence to fight me, so I ended up with $200,000 without even lifting a glove. But it was about $2.4 to the pound back then, so I come out with £60,000 net. Mickey made a nice little earner too. It was money for old rope, but missing out on Ali was a great disappointment. After winning the European title, I was his mandatory challenger when he was still world champ, but I never got my shot. 